Hi everyone, and you're welcome to 90 Days with Jesus Devotional. Our topic for today asks this question, are you tithing? And our text is from Malachi 3 verse 8, and it says, begin by being honest. Do honest people rob God? But you rob me day after day. You ask, how have we robbed you? I'm sure you're wondering, what's all this about robbing? When we do not pay our tithe, in essence, we're robbing God. A tithe is the tenth of our income or earning. So if you're a business owner or a salary earner or you've received some money legally, you are required to pay a tenth of that money. So for instance, if you have 100 units, you're required to pay 10 units to God. Tithing is such a great privilege. It's like God is inviting you to partner with him in advancing his kingdom. And God owns the whole world and the fullness thereof. So really, when you think about it, what can you give God? But God is giving us this privilege by saying, come and partner with me to advance my kingdom. Also, another thing that tithing does is it declares your dependency on God. 2 Corinthians 9 says that having complete sufficiency in everything, being completely sufficient in him, so all of that sufficiency sufficiency something is just saying that whenever we give our tithes we say god i couldn't have done this without you this money is your own i couldn't have made this money if you didn't help me and for me the most powerful reason for tithing is that it is an act of love you know the bible talks about abraham in genesis and abraham paid a tithe even before moses declared it as a Levitical law. And he did it, he wasn't compelled to do it, but he did it. And I, I, I know all these things that we're doing right now, tithing really is not about God, it's, for, it's mostly for us. What do I mean? The Bible says we're royal priesthood. And you're watching the devotional right now. You enjoy facilities in your church, the air conditioning and all those things. And all those things are made possible because of tithing. And if, imagine it, if, Imagine an organization without funding. It will collapse. So tithing is God's plan to fund the church. And the amazing thing about tithing is that it also comes with a promise. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. You know, like all those buffets that you go and as long as you are available and yes, your stomach is not full, we will keep supplying you. God has said he will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. And he will rebuke the devourer, the destroyer for you. There's, um, if you are old enough, you would understand what it means to, or, or what, what it implies when money can't do everything. Even if you work in a government, in a, if you live in a country that the governance is good and government is working, there are still some things that money cannot do for you. A couple of years ago, my husband was diagnosed with a medical condition. And while we are struggling with, you know, the reality of that, we met some other people that had gone through multiple organ failures, that had gone through such a hard time with that same condition. And it just struck me that, you know, sometimes God will not even allow the destroyer to touch your health or things. But sometimes, even when you're going through a tough challenge, God will tell the destroyer, thus far and no more. And that's, and that's what happened in our own case. You know, the, the covenant has such powerful blessings. So how do we give our tithe? The first thing is you find a Bible-believing church, you know, and then you pay your tithe in whatever mode the church has specified. Now, I also understand that some people, you know, because tithing can be controversial, and some people think, oh, my church is not, can my church be held accountable? Will they manage the tithe properly? And all of that. I want to assure you that God is powerful by himself. He does not need man to defend him. In the Bible, the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant and they took it to their own camp and took it to their temple, to the temple of their god, Dagon. By the next day, Dagon was flat on his face. And subsequently after, his hands and his feet were cut off. And the priests were not even there. The priests were not there to defend the Ark of the Covenant. But God was watching over his own property. That's the same thing he does with the tithe. The tithe is God's. The Bible also talks about Hannah. Hannah made a vow to God. She didn't have any children. And she said whatever, that she was going to dedicate her child to God. Do you know she was going to dedicate her, uh, she, was, she was going to give her child to God, rather. At that time, Eli was the priest. Eli was a man that was not the father of the year. 
He couldn't even handle his own children properly. He couldn't bring them up uh, well. He, they, they, they had made God's sacrifice an abomination. But Hannah knew that she wasn't giving Samuel to Eli or to the church. She was giving Samuel to God. In the, in the same way, when we give our tithe, we give it to God, not to the church, even though they are earthly rep representatives. We, we are not giving it to our pastors. So I want to encourage you, in case you've not plugged into this powerful covenant, it is yours by a right. Open blessings, open heaven blessings are yours by right. Please make sure that you plug into this today. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you for the powerful covenant that is tithing. We thank you, Father, for the blessings and the open heaven blessings that you are going to pour out on us. We ask that you help us in whatever way, Lord, to enable us to plug into the powerful covenant that is tithing. Father, we give you praise and we thank you, Father, because you help us to be faithful, to be faithful stewards of your resources, the resources you have given us, and to, uh, even as we declare our dependency on you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I hope you have been blessed by today's study. See you next time.